shows a lot of hard work on the part of our teachers and administrators. Um, I really want to thank uh, our building principals and vice principals who came out tonight in support of this presentation. So we really think you're going to like what you're seeing and the direction that the district is going as it relates to improving student behavior and school climate throughout our district. Uh, so this is the first half of the 2016-2017 report on violence and vandalism in our schools and the process of intimidation and bullying. At the very beginning of the school year, our, our principals uh, came up with some district-wide goals. I just want to remind you of what those goals are at this time. They were to increase time in class, to increase ex student exposure to instruction, and to increase academic achievement. So we had a number of initiatives that were associated with those goals um, <coughs> that we thought were important. One of them was training staff and in the use of positive behavior support. Um, as you may or may not know, all of our schools, all of our elementary schools, our intermediate school, and our middle school are PBS schools, positive behavior support schools. And our high school is preparing to become a positive behavior support school. That's important, and I'll show you why in a moment. This triangle, represent um, a nation, the national study of PBIS. And it talks about on one side discipline and on the other side academics. And if you notice, they're almost about the same. This green area, which represents about between 80 and 90% of students, need very little support either academically or behaviorally to do the right thing. It is the 15 to 20 percent of students that sometimes need additional support. What is amazing about this triangle is this is what the National PBIS um, Center says is the model for all school districts. Um, I want to, as we go through this presentation tonight, you will see that all of our schools are. Um, in this exact range or better. So we're very proud of that fact. So the first set of discipline talks about, the first set of data focuses on discipline referrals. This is any time a student gets written up for misbehavior. Some of these result in suspensions, but many of them do not. So the total number of discipline referrals last year in Franklin High School 711 for the first half of the year. For the second half, up for this current year, well, the one that just ended, um, September through December 2016, there were 838. So you say that that is an increase. But I want to remind you of some initiatives that were taking place at the high school, namely the cell phone use policy and the dress code, which account for a lot of those numbers. When you're looking at these two charts, I'm going to get close myself. Um, this represents this current um, September through December. This is Franklin High School. And these are, this is a new category, the high school students who are currently at the road to success. So when you look at what this represents is um, roughly 80% of the students at Franklin High School and almost 80, 75% of the students in the, the high school students in the road to success program received no discipline referrals, none. Okay, if I compare that to last year, and it's almost roughly the same, with the exception for the road to success, which is a little higher. So, what do those, what happens, what, what did the 20% of those students look like? So, um, 
And again, I apologize that you can't make this out, but what this represents is the location of, uh, or the types of misconduct that were reported. Um, if you look at this blue section, I know you can't make it out, but that is cutting class. So that is this year that just ended in 2015. It was, um, so this past year was 27%, and the year before it was 42%. So you see that there's a big significant reduction. And remember, back in the beginning of the year, this was a focus area for the high school. Um, electronic devices is a, is a slight increase. Um, went from, looks um, like about, uh, right, this, this sliver here is electronic devices, hard to see. And this sliver here represents electronic devices. And that was a focus for this year. So, the location, that's also um, kind of significant. Um, most of, most of these incidents occur in the classroom, and the same is true in both years. Um, the next significant area was the hallway and stairwells. Um, and again, they're roughly almost identical. So the interventions that we use at the high school are, uh, are continuing to use. Teachers are being trained in the area of classroom management. Um, administrators are conducting regular classroom walkthroughs to assist teachers with classroom management. Um, administrators are also providing additional supports to substitute teachers. Um, staff are monitoring the direction of hallway traffic, and there's a greater staff presence in our cafeterias. And as I mentioned earlier, we are beginning to, um, our, our high school is preparing for um, a launch, a PBS launch in um, the 2017-18 school year. Now, our next set of numbers, data focuses on our middle school, intermediate school age group of students, okay? So again, when you look at the numbers, um, there were uh, more, uh, slightly more ODRs, office discipline referrals written in this portion of the year than it be in 2015. But again, I want to show you that at Franklin Middle School, they are 80% um, of their, in fact, over 80%, slightly over 80 um, percent of the students who attend Franklin Middle School receive no discipline referrals, none. Um, and again, here the road to success is, um, you know, 60%. Now, I want to just slightly say, at the middle school students, there are only 10 students who attend the Road to Success program. So that means four students receive discipline referrals there. And at SGS, as you look and see, it is almost 90% of the students at SGS received no discipline referrals for, um, the, 2000, for the first half of the 2016-17 school year. If I compare it with the numbers last year, it is almost almost the same, with the exception of Ruth to success. Okay, again, if I look at um, the types of misconduct, um, what you might expect from middle schoolers at 20%, Physical aggression was the highest. Um, as uh, and you might want to recall that last year, bus um, behavior, uh, bus ODRs rather, were very high in the dis throughout the district, also throughout the middle school and intermediate school. That number has significantly was significantly diminished in the first half of the school year a trend that we think we're trying to, um, was part of our target, and 
um, impairs that maybe some of those strategies are working. 